time. Mm -hmm. You can yeah. do it. Yeah. See, you. and so when we come back to in this uh, final segment, I'll introduce the uh, show again. Oh. But uh, and, and in case I forget, but what I'd like for you to do is to look at these two personalities oh. in the context of all the things that you've studied about them and writing your book uh, and, and books and et cetera, and to look and, and to examine those two individuals, Dr. Martin Luther King and Adam Clayton Powell, and point out whatever the similarities or difficulties and et cetera, whatever you want to talk about. But I, I, I think that that would be good to end this because these are the two most important individuals oh. <clears throat> in terms of contemporary black uh, society and uh, the uh, uh, institutional church, you see, and I'd like to know more about the, you know, about this myself, you see. And so when we come back, we'll do that. Uh, we'll, be, uh, we'll do this. We'll have, <coughs> excuse me, we'll have 10 minutes to do this. I need some water myself. Yeah. <coughs> okay, very good. Thank you, now. Herbert Marbury. Yes, that's okay. it. Okay, well, you know, I have to do that every time. Let's <laughs> 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 you're giving us some excellent, and I don't make too, I don't want to make any noise. I mean. Thank you and welcome back to the final segment of the show for today. We're talking to Dr. Herbert Marbury from Vanderbilt University, and he's given us some information in reference to African Americans and the institutional church. Uh, doctor, let's see if we might be able to pick up during this final segment to uh, talk about uh, what I consider to be two very, very significant individuals that you've already mentioned, uh, Dr. Uh, Martin Luther King and Adam Clayton Powell. And let's see what you uh, know about those individuals and how they fit into what we're trying to do at, at this particular time. Right. Well. In uh, the chapter on the Civil Rights Movement, I take up uh, Dr. King and Adam Clayton Powell as a pillar of cloud and fire. Dr. Um, Dr. King as a pillar of cloud, mm -hmm. uh, and Dr. Uh, and, and Adam Clayton Powell as a pillar of fire. And when, when I say pillar of fire, I mean someone who kind of brandished, if you will, uh, his 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 brashness, a boldness, a certain <laughs> radical nature. Uh, Adam Clayton Powell was. Uh, very clear in while he was in Congress mm -hmm. that he called himself the baddest Negro in Congress. Yeah, yeah, go That's on right. and, then, <laughs> and and he he flouted the rules. Mm -hmm. He didn't stomach segregation. Uh, he didn't take kindly to the kinds of the kinds of conventions mm -hmm. that um, that that made African Americans second class. Mm -hmm. And 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 in part it had to do with his upbringing. Had to do with who he was. Um, but it also had to do with I think growing up in Harlem. Mm -hmm. And uh, be, he really was, I call him, uh, a son of the Harlem Renaissance. Mm -hmm. He was the new Negro, uh, as mm -hmm. I understand it, Good. that the Harlem Renaissance writers had hoped for. Mm -hmm. um, he started the first, uh, the first, one of the first boycotts uh, of, the, um, of, 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 the, um, of the public transportation system mm -hmm. in Harlem, uh, one of the first uh, sort of public service programs mm -hmm. for, at, at his church, at Abyssinia, mm -hmm. uh, Abyssinian uh, Baptist, Baptist Church. Mm -hmm. And, um, but it, and by the time he, was, he went to Congress, he was pastoring the largest Protestant congregation in the nation. Um, Adam Clayton Powell is known for his, um, he's not only known for, for his pastoral work, but he's known for the Powell Amendment, mm -hmm. which was, which was a, a, a little known sort of codicil that he mm -hmm. would add to every bill that um, that 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 sent funding mm -hmm. uh, for for public uh, for, for public accommodations, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, it, it was a bill that said if that that public funding could not be used for segregated institutions, mm -hmm. it angered seg Southern segregationists mm -hmm. throughout the country, but it also angered African Americans mm -hmm. because some of those schools were African American schools in the South. Although they were segregated, they were they were also they were starved <laughs> because they also needed the public funding. Mm -hmm. But Clayton Powell and Clayton Powell didn't care. What he was concerned about was ensuring that those who wanted segregation 
had to pay for it. Mm -hmm. And so he starved them all to death mm -hmm. until he was able to get the, the Civil Rights Bill in 1964. Mm -hmm. That was his victory mm -hmm. in, uh, in the, the Civil Rights Bill of 64. Mm -hmm. um, he was there when uh, ba ba Lyndon Baines Johnson signed it, and, mm -hmm. but so was Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Mm -hmm. And King, who was, uh, now these, they were both princes of the Black Baptist Church. Mm -hmm. um, Adam Clayton Powell had um, gone to, um, had, um, you know, attended uh, school in New York. Um, his father, uh, his, his father in many ways had groomed him to be a prince of the Baptist mm -hmm. church. Uh, Martin Luther King. As Dr. King. As Dr. King's father. <laughs> Good. Both, Good. His father, at, uh, um, his father pastored Abyssinian, mm -hmm. while Dr. King's father pastored Ebenezer. Mm -hmm. And um, they, they both groomed their sons for, for the roles that they would take. Mm -hmm. uh, they both went to, um, went, went to elite schools, uh, mm -hmm. Morehouse College in the South, and they both were products of the black middle class. Mm -hmm. But where they differed, I think, was um, Martha, Dr. King grew up in the segregated South, uh, born right at, at um, 1929, uh, just as, as, as America was going into the Great Depression. And um, Dr. King saw a different and a brutal side of white segregationist Good. power. Um, and it was something that I don't think Adam Clayton Powell saw. That shaped Dr. King mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> in a way that it probably that, that Adam Clayton Powell didn't. And get. led to his assassination. Yes, mm -hmm. and led to and mm -hmm. led to his assassination. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, mm -hmm. and in a sense, both of them were assassinated. Mm -hmm. uh, Dr. King, uh, literally. Good. Uh, mm -hmm. Adam Clayton Powell was politically destroyed because of his brashness. Mm -hmm. um, so, what I find with um, no. Both of them come at a time when African Americans have, have migrated. And I think this is also important to make the making of these two figures. Um, African Americans began to migrate immediately after, um, after the Civil War. Uh, every 10 years, you look at the census, you see more and more African Americans migrating toward the West and toward the North, what you, uh, except for the 10 years during the Depression when you don't see much migration. But you see, and so African Americans migrated from rural communities in the South to, um, to um, cities in the South like Montgomery and Atlanta that created the possibility for a Montgomery bus boycott, mm -hmm. but also created the possibility for an Abyssinian Baptist church, which, which was Adam Clayton Powell's political base, mm -hmm. and which became for Martin Luther King mm -hmm. the base for the Montgomery bus boycott mm -hmm. and Ebenezer. Mm -hmm. And so um, as these two figures began to interpret the biblical text, uh, they began to, they thought of they thought of the Exodus story at, for, um, for Adam Clayton Powell, the Exodus story guaranteed for African Americans uh, in, his, in, his, uh, in his sermon, Stop Blaming Everyone Else, which he, um, uh, which he preached at Abyssinian Baptist Church in the 50s. It was a sermon that invited African Americans to fully participate mm -hmm. in what it meant to be a citizen, take responsibility for what it meant to be a citizen. He, he, he really pushed African Americans. He pushed African Americans mm -hmm. to take responsibility mm -hmm. for it. Um, and so for Martin Luther King Jr., however, uh, there was a different way of understanding the biblical text. For Martin Luther King Jr., um, he, growing up in the South, um, personal piety mm -hmm. became very important in as much as his political work mm -hmm. Personal piety became a mask, if you will, mm -hmm. for Martin Luther King Jr. He, he knew that if he was, if he was leading African Americans out to, to, um, into the streets to demand full inclusion, he knew how to use the television cameras, mm -hmm. how to use the public square, and the way he used it was to lead African Americans into acts of personal piety. That's what mm -hmm. I call the pillar of cloud. Mm -hmm. He masked, he, in many ways, his mm -hmm. real intentions. Mm -hmm. He would lead them to pray, in the streets to sing songs. Mm -hmm. And when the television cameras came and they saw African Americans living out some of the, you know, th these kind of virtuous represent, these mm -hmm. virtuous expressions, right? Mm -hmm. Singing church mm -hmm. songs, praying, holding hands, praying for their enemies. Uh, not only was the, na the, the South was embarrassed, the nation mm -hmm. was embarrassed, but they were not only embarrassed domestically, they were embarrassed internationally. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's, I call that the pillar of cloud because as a, it's just as a cloud kind of blends in seamlessly, mm -hmm. uh, Martin, Luther, Martin Luther King's tactics blended in with mm -hmm. the American uh, moral landscape. 
These were virtues for America. And this was mm -hmm. also mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Martin Luther King behind the veil. Yes. And you know more about that because yes. of uh, one of your uh, professors, I'm yes. sure. Dr. Baldwin. Uh, doc Dr. Baldwin, right. who talked about right. that and et cetera. And I think that yes. you're an, an excellent reflection yes. in terms of uh, what he said about that and some of the things mm -hmm. that you're saying yes. about that. And I want you to know that uh, the information that you're giving us now is, mm -hmm. is, is very, very precious. Right. And I think that uh, uh, understanding these two individuals right. and some of the things that they faced and how different they were, mm -hmm. one from the north and mm -hmm. one from the, the south, south. Yes. but yet and still they had the same commitment and, and, and while they went about it differently, mm -hmm. they had the same commitment in terms of the uplift of African Americans to eventually what? reach the promised land. Right. And, and I think that that's what we're still trying to move toward. And that's, what, that, mm -hmm. that's what we're still trying. And that's what I hope that as you read my book, but as, as we think about biblical interpretation,